Ms. Marvel kicks off on June 8th when Obi-Wan Kenobi will just happen to be airing its third episode of six. A Marvel and Star Wars overlap on Disney Plus, I suppose it had to happen eventually, but did it? And did it have to happen to Ms. Marvel? I think it's one thing to pit an established character versus another established character, but Ms. Marvel's trying to make her freaking debut. Now, maybe some Disney executive argued that they have different audiences, but I say F that. That's insulting to both groups, because I think that the whole appeal of Marvel and Star Wars is that they're supposed to be for everybody. And when you introduce new types of characters into those worlds, it's supposed to be so that everybody meets them, not that some people decide to sit it out and these new characters are stuck in niche entertainment once again. Uh, it's frustrating. I don't know what we're going to do about watch-alongs, break, breakdowns. I think Ms. Marvel's going to get the short end of the stick unless Kenobi's just like an awful show, which I don't think is going to happen. So it really sucks. June, it's going to be super crowded overall at that time. The Boys comes starts the early June. That's also a weekly release. Uh, and at least Umbrella Academy and Stranger Things, right in the same target demographic, at least they're binges. And speaking of binging, I think what's going to happen is that a lot of people are going to binge Ms. Marvel uh, because they'll be busy watching Obi-Wan and, and other things. And also, I think Ms. Marvel's going to have to have some super awesome cameos, unfortunately, to get some people to tune in. So they'll wait till they hear if that happened, and then they'll, they'll watch the whole show. I hope this does well. I think it looks really, really excellent. All right, so as I told you a long time ago, they're changing her powers. Uh, and a lot of you just wouldn't believe it. Cause, and I could understand why, because it seems so ridiculous. Uh, so you have to, you know, you have to see it to believe it. Well, now you've seen it. And, you know, Ms. Marvel used to tie to the bigger Marvel universe in the comics because she was an inhuman when they were really pushing the inhumans, uh, which was stupid because the show was coming out around then. Marvel was like, we're going to make inhumans work. Stop trying to make inhumans work. Uh, although, well, there's one inhuman that, Man, yeah, you'll see. All right, so anyway, this is Ms. Marvel is now not an inhuman. Let's say she's maybe a genie, as I've tweeted before. You might be like, what the fuck? Well, you'll see. Okay, so anyway, one of the reasons that we thought that maybe they weren't doing the stretchy powers is that it would make her too similar to Reed Richards, who, of course, is soon joining the MCU. But I agree with many of you that she now instead has Sue Storm's powers. So it's very similar. I guess you can't see Sue Storm's, uh, you know, invisible force that she makes into all different kinds of stuff. You know, basically the way uh, um, uh, Kamala uses purple crystals, Sue Storm uses an invisible force. Uh, I think Sue Storm works the best when you can kind of see the invisible force so you can understand how clever she is in using it. Uh, so we'll see what they decide to do with those powers. It's crazy. One of the, in, in one of the earliest comics, they were like, what's the woman's power? To be invisible. <laughs> That's the idea. Ah, oh, hilarious. All right, uh, uh, so anyway, but in Sue Storm's defense, I think that over the years, especially recently, some comics have done some really interesting stuff with her. And I'm not just talking about her, uh, you know, flirtation with Namor, which is also very, you know, 1950s, right? Oh, maybe she's going to sleep with someone else. All right. Now, I've seen a lot of comparisons to Green Lantern with this new power set, but I don't think that's true. I mean, I can, I get the joke. But I mean, it's good for a quick laugh, but then let's drop it because it's not like Green Lantern. Green Lantern can make anything with the, the all the lanterns can make any for any, 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 any shape, uh, any machine with their, with their, with their hard light constructs. But that's not what she's clearly doing. That's not what uh, um, Kamala's clearly doing with her, with hers. She can only kind of use it again, like Sue Storm, she has these purple crystals and she has, you know, use the, the, you know, use them in some way. So I like it. I think it fits with Carol and Monica a little bit better. Uh, but what if she's a genie? How would that fit? Well, you know, you never know where genies on earth got their power from. Maybe some Cree bracelets dropped to earth a long time ago in the Middle East. And that's where genies come from. I'm sure the show will explain it. I think it's got to be somewhat Cree based though, uh, to make it work. Although it's interesting. Because Carol's powers come from, of course, I mean, Monica's powers now come, Carol's powers are, uh, come from the uh, Infinity Stone. 
So that's not even Cree based. And then, uh, so maybe, 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 maybe genies are infinity stone based. Hmm, that would be interesting. Uh, and Monica, of course, got her powers from interacting with uh, Wanda, who's also infinity stone powered in the MCU. All right, so it's not Cree. I think the genies maybe come from infinity stones. And the way Thanos was snapping his fingers and making stuff happen, that kind of is actually really makes sense and is interesting. Uh, and also, I can tell you that maybe the genies w will have different color powers. A little bit like witch witch witches in WandaVision. So, but just like they're different colored uh, infinity stones. Oh, I like this. No, you know, the more I think about it, the more it works. So, the, uh, so other people have been granting wishes. Thanos granted his own wishes. I'm very interested to learn the history of genies and what it's like for a genie who has no master. So, and also, of course, Disney has a very successful genie franchise with Aladdin. Where is Aladdin to? All right, so also, I did not care for her stretchy powers So in the comics, so I mourn them less than the rest of, than those of you who liked them. I always thought they were way too cartoonish, and I never thought they would work in live action next to the other uh, MCU characters, especially as, uh, considering how she uses them, again, in a very cartoonish way, uh, whereas Reed Richards uses them more in a scientific way, so I think that's why that'll work a little bit better. And she still has the big fists. That was her signature move, and she can still do them now. They're just purple crystal glowy fists, which I think is an upgrade. So I like it. I think it's great. All right, so let's let's go through this. I've got some information for you. Uh, so this is um, gonna you know set you up really well for the show. I think I think it's gonna be a great time. All right, so we start off with her doodling. Uh, you can see she's uh, you know it's very turning red. You know, not only. Uh, in the ter in terms of the type of personality uh, and this like goofy, fun, awesome you know girl, but also the struggle of family heritage from your homeland versus your new modern culture uh, and trying to live in the space in between, which a number of families whose parents and relatives come from other countries can relate to. Uh, and so I think it's really wonderful to see that experience being depicted. So uh, we've seen it done for China with Turning Red, and this is going to be focusing on a Pakistani family, although I'm sure many families from the Middle East have similar experiences. So I think it's great. Uh, she's uh, doodling. Uh, she has this funny Ant-Man versus man ant. Hilarious. And she has a driving test coming up. I love her manicure. Very Not at all like the comics, but I think it's great. And so there she is, she's daydreaming. Doesn't Mon Volani look great there? She looks really great. I'm so glad that the show took good care of her and puts her forward in a really good spot. I thought that the way, you know, the whole situation with uh, Kelly Marie Tran as Rose Tico was really unfortunate, and I think that Star Wars did her dirty. So I'm so happy to see that Marvel is not doing the same to Mon Volani. She looks fantastic. All right, so she's daydreaming. She's daydreaming about Marvel, like so many of us. How can you not relate to that? So I love this. Uh, she's being talked to by her guidance counselor, uh, who has a communal thing of peanut M&Ms. Uh, do not eat ever any candy from a communal uh, jar. It's not, it's, not, it's not sanitary. All right. So he's like, I get it. And she's like, how can you possibly get it? Uh, she's great. The way she talks, especially in her scene with the guidance counselor, she does have a very similar delivery to Haley Steinfeld. So much so that I'm a little bit like, is it too close? You know, like... It's very, very close, but we love Haley Steinfeld. So I think, uh, and obviously Amon Vellani's already been cast. So we'll allow it. So school is crazy for her. Uh, no Marvel Easter eggs behind her, but you know, you can see stuff's going on in, uh, in school. And I love this. This is great. I love the expression on her face. I think she's handling this very bad interaction with dignity. She's not letting this girl get away with it and making it seem like everything's okay. But you know, she's just trying to keep her cool. These are the kind of leadership and temper control qualities you need to be a superhero. So good for uh, Kamala. So she's, you know, she's correcting this popular girl about the difference between Kamala, Kamala Harris, and Kamala Khan, the difference between the two pronunciations. And she pronounces her as the latter. Uh, that's Bruno, her best friend who secretly has a crush on her. And she has a crush on him too in the comic. We'll see how it's done here. And then that's an, another one of her friends. All right, so... Uh, I like uh, her, she's in her, this popular girl is being all mean girls and saying, uh, so you're wearing another Avengers shirt, huh? And she is indeed. She's got, so it's what? It's like, girls, let's get international in, information, informative. I'm not quite sure what her shirt says. Why would you have a saying on it and then cover it up? But anyway, she's got wasp, 
Carol Danvers, they're all wearing glasses for some reason. And I think that's Valkyrie at the end, which is super cool. And there's the rumor that uh, Carol Danvers and Valkyrie are going to become a couple. That'll be very interesting. I'm rooting for that. I think that works with the way both characters have been depicted so far. But I think the story's very relatable because she should wear an Avengers shirt. Let me tell you a story about myself. I was in camp one summer and we went to the mall. And I really wanted to go to the Warner Brothers store. And it was my group of friends. Uh, they, we went to all the other stores that they were interested in. And I was like, I'd really now like to go to the Warner Brothers store. And none of them would go. They were like, oh, we don't want to go to the Warner Brothers store. And I'm like, I just went to all your stores. So I'm very proud of myself. I said, see ya. And I went to the Warner Brothers store by myself. And I didn't talk to any of them any anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so this stuff happens and you know you you should like what you like and don't be peer pressured uh, by very short-sighted individuals so I mean uh, Kamala Khan's about to become a superhero so very cool so I love it I like the graphics with the devil ears they look pretty cool I, she should give her like a, a devil mustache too because I'm like this is this is too good people would want to have this look all right so she's like, she thinks I'm some kind of freak. And he's like, you are a freak. Uh, look at the flirting. I love it. So she's obviously going to don this later on. They sell this at the Circle Q where Bruno works and where um, Kamala hangs out a lot. So this guy is Cameron, who is obviously a hottie at school. This is very turning red. Uh, but just keep an eye on him. That's all I'll say. This guy is an important part of the story. And look, this hat is the hat from the comic. I wish they showed her fully wearing it. I'm sure they will on the show, but it's so charming, and I think it's a it's an awesome hat. So, but she she should keep it on. But she's like, no, no, I gotta take this hat off. So uh, everybody except Bruno is into this guy. Bruno's like, you like this guy? Is this what you're into? That's I thought more of you, uh, Kamala. So I love this shot, uh, and the music is used really well in this trailer. Uh, look at that jerk with their sh shoes up next to her in class. But I love the projector behind her. It's just a really cool look. She's like, something's got to change. And I'm like, I agree. So she's daydreaming, uh, and look, she looks great. <laughs> So she, I love, I love the, her, the, I love the scope of her daydreams. She's a superhero, also, a, you know, a beauty queen. I think that's very, very true to how a lot of, you know, girls see themselves growing up. They want to have it all. So I think that's fantastic. She looks great. She looks so great. Uh, and the day's just going by, and she's dreaming about uh, uh, Cameron. And then her guidance counselor's like, snap out of it. And I love her saying, "Can I make my life decisions maybe a little bit later?" Oh, I love it. So that's, there she is hanging out with Bruno, and she says, uh, she's talking about being criticized for always living in a fantasy world. And she says, it's not really the brown girls from Jersey who save the world, that's a fantasy too. And that's incredible, that's an incredible line to me about how she's like, why wouldn't I retreat into a fantasy because what you're telling me could be my reality is just a pipe dream too. So that's that's great, and it shows a lot of the, the damage that society does to people and making them feel they can't dream. So I love it, I think it's great, and obviously, because they're gonna show that's wrong. So she's like, I'm wearing it, I'm wearing it, and she looks great in it, she looks great in it. She, that's a great leather coat, I love it. She looks great, She doesn't. I don't like the helmet so much, but she looks really good with her hair down. And I like that her mother's like, that's not you. Cause you know, it's like traditional culture versus her, her situation. And also her room is very, uh, well, there's a better shot of her room later, but it's right out of the video game, the recent video game. So she's looking at Manhattan from across the way in New Jersey. And look, she's going through her old family heirlooms and she finds this bracelet. Oh, the lights are flickering. That's a classic movie sign. If something awesome's about to happen, your life's gonna change. Uh, so that's kind of, I, by the way, Another great manicure uh, from Kamala. She has great manicure choices. So look, it's this bracelet, and of course genies do wear bracelets, so I think it's really well done. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a relative's, and she puts it on, and look, her eyes light up. Oh, it's so great. And she has this cool effect, and she gets powered up. Good thing she didn't find a lamp in there. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, I don't wanna live in here. Meet your new apartment. She's like, what's happening? This is great. I wonder if that's her brother. All right, she has a very cool relationship with her older brother. Now look, so I think that's her father being like, is everything okay? 
and she uses her cool powers. Those that's such an upgrade from the stretchy powers, in my opinion. And also, it would be two Reed Richards. That looks so great. Who wouldn't want that power? Look, there's Carol on her wall. I love it. And she closes the door. It's just like the, the room with the lights. It's just like the video game. Nice room. I'm not quite sure what she's grabbing onto there, closing that. But it looks great. You can see the, the purple stones, uh, crystal energy. All right. And someone bombed the circle cue. Those monsters. Where will we hang out after school? And I love the way her hands glow. I mean, I just think it's very cool and affordable as a superpower. But it looks great. And look, just like Sue Storm, she can walk on air. But when Sue, Sue does it, you can't see the invisible uh, platform. So it looks like she's just walking on air. But I like this. I think this is a great, great thing to do. So, she, oh yeah, and someone asks her, how does it feel? And she says, cosmic. So I feel there is an infinity stone component to this, to genies. They're gonna say that genies actually are powered by the infinity stones. Uh, so look, look at her uh, jump. And someone said they thought that was stretchy powers. No, she's just all glowing. So I guess she can kind of have like a cool force field. That's awesome. Look, she looks like she's go. she looks a little stretchied. Maybe that's just a perspective, but it looks like she's really, Really gonna hit somebody, I love it. Okay, I love it, so good. So some stuff's going down. This is a secret government organization from the Ms. Marvel comics, you'll see. All right, so we'll find out more about them. Nice shoes. And now this is another group rumored to be clandestine. Get it? Clandestine is a word, but also a clan is a family. So the clandestine. So they have a double meaning to it. Ha <laughs> ha. I actually, I laugh, but it's actually, I think, very cool. So in the comics, this is also from the comics, but not the Ms. Marvel comics, and it's more obscure. They're a family of genies in the comics, in the Marvel comics. Uh, actually, I believe not of Middle Eastern descent because old comics were ridiculous in some ways, but I think here they're being reimagined as a Middle Eastern family of genies, which is super cool. Uh, so they, they, also, I wonder if this is a flashback. In the comic, uh, uh, Kamala uh, did go to visit her ancestors in Pakistan, but I don't know if this show is gonna have enough room for her to do that in season one. I hope they get more multiple seasons. I hope it's good, hope it's good enough. Uh, so maybe there's a flashback to whoever owned that bracelet before it was found its way to a, a, a garage in Jersey. So this is very pretty. So looking at heritage, and I'm glad that she has a good relationship with her mom too. Just like in Turning Red, uh, I didn't like the way the relationship ended in Turning Red. You can love your, you can still love your mom. So look, so look, so I wonder where this is too. This seems to be. So it looks like what is this? Like a genie fight? There's also Red Dagger, who is a Pakistani superhero from the comics. But so that could be him. He does have like a seems like a red kerchief. So we'll see. Ah, she's got the big hands. And so this, I believe this woman is a member of the matriarch of clandestine. And she's saying, do you even know what you are? And she's looking at a domino mask. Again, how do people not know who you are if you're wearing just a stupid domino mask? So, oh look, Bruno has a broken arm, just like he does in the comic. Looks like he's helping, is that Cameron? Okay. And so there she is wearing a, the domino mask with a slightly different look. And look, see, oh look, so we, I think that's the government guys. And look at that, that's great. She looks awesome there. That's a great use of the purple construct. It's stopping bullets, baby. And she says, cause oh, remember it's an answer to that question of do you even know what you are? And her answer is, I'm a superhero. Oh, I love it. Oh, and she's so happy. She runs off and it's Ms. Marvel. Woo. And there she is, just like the comic book cover sitting on a lamppost, looking at the city, the big city with big dreams. A little like Working Girl too. I love it. If you've not seen the opening of Working Girl, you're missing out, great movie. But that's uh, a little old fashioned, uh, you, know, you know, before the Me Too movement, but still overall a good movie. But I think this looks fantastic. And they put a little bit of the purple glow. They put a little purple glow on that Disney Plus logo too, which is awesome. So I think this is really good. I think this is an improvement on the comic and I'm very excited to see uh, Kamala Khan uh, in the MCU. And I think that she's a great fit with Carol and uh, Monica. I think it's gonna go really well. I mean, she's already in a movie. She's in the Ms. She's in Ms. Mar uh, the Marvels. So what do you think? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.